everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Avengers Endgame and how it's going to affect all the Disney Plus shows going forward. Now, I have to say, warning, warning, warning. We're going to be going full-on spoilers. That's why we're doing it as an extra episode this week. Um, so if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, turn it off, come back, save it for later, come see it after you've seen it, and then you'll make a little bit more sense. But we are going to go in full-on spoilers. I'm going to be putting spoilers spoilers everywhere to let you know that that's going to be happening um so yeah so quick warning there so if, uh, there you go make sure you hit that stop button so <laughs> avengers endgame came out in cinemas this week um so first off james what did what we're just going to say our initial thoughts of it what did you think of avengers endgame i think it was really great honestly mm -hmm. um for me it was the end cap of 11 years worth of stories and in that sense, it was everything that I wanted it to be. Now, we'll talk about this in a bit more depth in a bit, but I will say that if you aren't, uh, you know, like a full on fanboy of the MCU and stuff, uh, a little bit long, a little bit self indulgent, uh, et cetera, I would say that. Uh, this was in many ways like a return of the king. Yeah. Uh, style thing where if you were 100% a Lord of the Rings fan then Return of the King was like the most amazing thing of all time whereas I was just a very casual I'd seen the movies I'd read the Hobbit hadn't actually read the the mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings trilogy I was like these are a lot of fun and then we got to the Return of the King I was just like I am enjoying this movie but it is really long yeah. and I think Endgame is the same mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at it from the like pure fanboy yeah. side and if you're not on the pure fanboy uh plan a, a bathroom break or something yeah. to kind of break it up a little bit yeah uh, i it was that kind of thing of i mean i went thursday morning i was there at eight o'clock in the morning the cinema was like a quarter full and for an eight o'clock morning show that was i well wasn't expecting that um i really enjoyed it i thought it was good i did it's that kind of thing if i thought i loved it i thought it was great i really enjoyed it i still feel like infinity war was a better movie to watch because of how it was leading up to it. event endgame was very much it felt so different to infinity war in the way that they set it up the way they had it going and it just like you say it built up to it i mean i was explaining this to my to my because my family and stuff were asking me about you know, the avengers movie and they were going, oh we heard this big movie's coming and then my like, mom's going well who's in it and i'm going you know spider-man this 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 and then and you can see my mom going you, we, how, how many superheroes are in this? Movie? Like, well, basically all of them. It's like trying to explain that to a, to a, someone that doesn't know. They're going, well, we they're used to seeing superhero movies with one. So this was just, yeah, it goes over the top. But this whole thing about being fanboy and all the rest of it. We're twenty odd movies into this franchise at the minute. What other franchise or movie have made twenty odd movies interconnected? Nothing's okay. ever been done like this. No, and nothing Bond, will probably. Yeah, I was sorry. Say it again. You know, James Bond. There, and that's a new one. It's like yeah, they've got twenty-five plus movies on them, but they're not interconnected. They keep changing the actors. You know, everyone's kind of its own individual. You know, these are this is completely unprecedented in movies. Yeah, like GoldenEye isn't the culmination of all of the Connery Bonds and all uh, etc. Movies. It while there is a certain amount of continuity between them, the it's just a franchise. Each movie stands on its own, not counting the, the Daniel Craig. Those are yeah. a little more interlinked and chances are, we're not really going to see this kind mm. of storytelling again. Uh, and in fact, if Marvel uh, even tried to start it now, like if, if they tried to start now with mm. Iron Man and incredible Hulk, it probably wouldn't have succeeded, succeeded the way it did. It, it worked largely because they, they backdoored it in, you know, it was, Oh wait, who's this Nick Fury character? Wait, Tony Stark showing up in the Incredible Hulk end credits. What's going on here? And that and they they kind of worked into it. But all these other companies uh, are just like, oh, it's a shared universe. Here's twenty different characters. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. And I'm not even I'm not even picking like a particular shared universe. I'm sure people yeah. are assuming I'm talking about one in particular, but I'm not. You know, the, there have been several attempts, and. Even moving forward, even, we know the MCU is going to continue after Endgame. We already know Far From Home is coming out in a couple months. Uh, we know there are plans for Phase 4 and 5 and 6. 
but will they be nearly as successful as what they're calling now the Infinity Saga? And I'm betting mm. even with the talent involved, it's going to be a really hard sell to keep people coming in and seeing Marvel movies after Endgame. It was funny though because my wife, my wife turned up and went, "So is that it?" And they're not making any more. And I just, I did, I did just laugh and go, "No, darling, this that was they, they've got so many more movies planned. It's like no, this was just the end of this particular so Because I'm starting to look at these Marvel movies; they're becoming like a soap opera. It's just we're we're churning up. We go see them every couple of months. And it's just now becoming like it's becoming just a thing that you just jump into and you, you continue on because they've set it all up. I mean, that's you know, that scene where all the heroes are fighting and you're thinking they still want to introduce even more heroes. You know, you think you've got all the X Men, the Fantastic Four, you've got the externals, you've got so many other characters that they've still got to play with. And it is just like there's this this thing is massive is it and it's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger because they've done they've done the ground right now i mean the amount of money this movie is pulling in at the cinema tells you that they've that people want because we don't want just want origin stories anymore we want more than that right and we want the the origin stories that we get to lead into something more yeah and we're, we're kind of willing to accept you know something like captain marvel or the original ant-man this is an origin yeah. But we're but we're also building up. Ant Man's going to be in Civil War. Ant Man's going to be in Ant Man and the Wasp. He's going to be in Endgame, and I think to a certain degree, we're actually willing to accept those origin stories more yeah. because we know that they're leading somewhere. Yeah, and um, we don't necessarily need to see Batman's parents die, Superman leave Krypton, or Spider Man get bit by a spider anymore. We've moved past past that. That's just, that's just known. Like the sun comes up, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that anymore. Right. Uh, although. Marvel is pretty much out of the like well-known aside yeah. from the X-Men. Yeah. They're out of the well-known everybody knows their origin story. Yeah. So, uh I do suspect we'll we'll continue to see origin stories moving forward, but the movies that we do know about or at least are are heavily favored in the rumor mill are still sequels to ones we've already got. You know, Black Panther 2, uh Guardians of the Galaxy 3, etc. So, yeah, I mean we're going to be finding out a lot more about this, those movies, either at San Diego Comic Con or at D23 Expo. Well, they'll be setting up what's happening next because they were waiting to Endgame to get done. So that because they, ha they, did they necessarily didn't want to spoil anything. I think it would have worked better had Spider Man Far From Home been out in like October and they didn't announce anything before it. I think that probably would have worked a little bit better from that because of the way that, but also just the way they set up the, the Disney Plus shows. Um, and kind of want to get into that kind of thing really of where the end game really helped it's like we know we've got three disney plus or four disney plus series three of them been confirmed one of them still rumored one division loki falcon and the winter soldier and also uh hawkeye is a rumored series um so first off let's go with the easiest one falcon versus the winter soldier that Endgame couldn't have set that TV show up any more clearly than it ever could, could it? I mean, I, kind of yes, kind of no. Honestly, we get the basic premise, mm -hmm. uh, and and now for anybody left, we are in full spoiler mode yeah. at the as of yeah. right now. So if you were just hanging on, uh, no, there's nothing left. Um, we saw at the end of Endgame, Falcon gets the shield from Captain America. He will become. Captain America, Captain Falcon. We're kind of unclear at the moment. He did take the title in the, the comics for a little while, but now he's back to being the Falcon. Um, we know that there will be something with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, him learning how to be Captain America, how to be representative, uh, all that. Win Winter Soldier will be an assistant, a guide, a sidekick. We're not really sure, but... Like in terms of what their actual quest will be, what the the MacGuffin of the series is, we don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. We we don't know what brings the two of them together, other than their shared friendship with uh, Steve Rogers and and what we saw of them of Winter Soldier and moving forward. But we we don't know what they're going to be fighting, what they're going to be looking for, uh, any of that. So so yes, we we have a, a basic like. Falcon will be taking on this mantle and figuring out what to do, but we don't know past that. But I mean, the way I looked at it is like, okay, they really did set these two. They're a team, and that 
the fair question is, is it going to be Falcon and the Winter Soldier or is it going to be Captain America and the Fal Winter Soldier? Are they going to go down that line of using the brand of Captain America rather than Falcon? Because that would sell subscriptions. And if they go, well, actually, no, well, you all saw in Endgame, you know, he's got the shield and he's a new Captain America. It's like, I could see them pulling it because they couldn't put that net, they couldn't put that title out there before. All they need to do is change that logo. That's not exactly a hard thing for them to do. They couldn't have turned around at the investor day and gone, yeah, Captain America and the Winter, and Winter is like, no, we knew they, they could do that. I, and I think they're pulling a lot more subscribers that way. Well, they're certainly going to generate plenty of controversy yeah. with that. Um, Falcon, of course, was Captain America in the comics for a while, and that was highly controversial. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it did work in Marvel's favor in that people were talking about it, and yeah. people were checking it out. And it was controversial for all the wrong reasons, of course. And, and they're, they're the reasons you're thinking of. I'm not yeah. going to lay them out, but they're the reasons you're thinking of. And... While we will get that with the show, if he does take the name Captain America, I really hope that that's not a focus of yeah. the show. So we'll, we'll see where they're going with this. We will see if they change the name to Captain America and Winter Soldier. Uh, and if they do, that'll obviously tell us mm. that uh, Sam is taking the name. I suspect that he might not actually take the name. more, Not to avoid the politics of it, but more to you know show deference to the man who who was Captain America and... And it might also be one of those things where he's Falcon at the beginning yeah, and grows into becoming Captain America by the end, in which case I would still call it Falcon and Winter Soldier. And, again, and you know, he could end the series signing there with the shield with his new Captain America kind of outfit on. But right. yeah, it's just, I think, you know, I, I, you sort of watched that scene and it was uh, instantly, it was just like, wow, they really did set these two guys up for that series. Um, to start, have them both standing there with the shield you know, you just, I just instantly felt like, okay, this is where that series is going to spin off from Endgame. And because if it's coming next year, it, you know, it's going to help set them up. And then they're getting used to the idea that Steve Rogers has gone. He might make an old man cameo. You know, we don't know. Um, but it, I would, I'd kind of like him to just become the new Stan Lee, just yeah. random Captain America, uh, just popping up randomly and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, not even as Captain America, it's just, Chris Evans in old man makeup making cameos the way Stan Lee used to. Yeah. So the next one was Loki. Now, there's a key scene in Avengers Endgame where they, you know, they've traveled back in time. It's like, this, it's like, oh, and apparently it doesn't work like Back to the Future. And it's, you know, where you change something in the past and it affects the future. It's its own separate timeline. So we've, we've got so many continuity issues. Who knows? But Loki, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Loki <laughs> managed to grab the Tesseract because Hulk smashed open the door. Right. Just to, to clarify, we're talking about the 2012 version of Loki, yeah. not the yeah, yeah. killed yeah. in Infinity War Loki, yeah. just to make things yeah. a little more complicated. Yeah. So on 2012, Hulk hits 2019 or 2023, Tony Stark but in the door when he comes through knocking the tesser out of the hand and not only that the briefcase nicely just opens up right in front of loki loki reaches down grabs it picks it up and disappears ultimately I, yeah can i just say that the number of people who apparently missed that scene is staggeringly high yeah i have seen so many conversations of people like is loki still alive did he did he come back after the snap was he brought back i'm like you guys missed the part where he grabbed the Tesseract and just disappeared in a puff of smoke. And they're like, what, when did that happen? Like, how did you miss that? <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it was that thing of like, now he's, of course that's now set up this entire thing of, he, I mean, Tom Hedison, it really got everyone because like on one of the television breakfast shows here in the UK on Friday morning, one of them went, well, he's only in it for three minutes. And like they killed off, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, the two biggest people die." The amount of uproar of her of them spoiling Endgame on live television in the morning, on the Friday, yeah, and it was like, that. and they're all like going, "Oh no, Tom Tom Hardy's only in it for three minutes." It's like, yeah, because he was he had died before that, and it was like, yeah, but this has now set a problem because the the timeline is not proper because there would have been an alternative timeline where Loki, um survives or something changes and he gets it so again it sets up this loki series if they can tell that story of they literally could just start the series with him appearing 
um, through the Tesseract with the thing over his mouth and go off on an entirely different story. They've just literally just, they've opened up the window of him. He died in the current one, but now there's an alternative version of him running around. And it could, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, that's where a lot of people, and yeah, they set it up that he might not be dead. Uh, yeah. And while it is great that they've set this up, they, they are giving themselves a little bit of a problem with both him and Gamora, because uh, Gamora has a very similar situation. Uh, not exactly the same, but similar. Where the character that fans fell in love with, I mean, okay, so Loki, you know, it was Avengers that kind of yeah. made fans fall in love with him, but the character growth happened in Thor Dark World and Thor Ragnarok. That has not happened anymore now. So a lot of what, what draws us to the current version of the character no longer exists. Gamora is a similar situation where uh, all of the growth that was in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is now just gone, straight up gone. So it's kind of a have your cake and eat it too scenario where they want you to, to kind of latch onto this Loki character. Uh, but it's not the Loki character that we're fully familiar with now. I, I, yeah, we, We're not sure how they're going to handle it yet. Uh, and obviously there's still plenty to love from uh, Thor and Avengers Loki, but yeah, there's definitely the only thing with Loki interesting there. A bit different to me is that he is like a thousand year old anim creature, you know, person. True. So therefore a two year gap in his lifestyle band probably actually didn't change him that much. It's just, he, yeah, he was friendly with, you know, yeah, he became a hero, an anti-hero. But he's been doing that on and off as a character probably throughout his whole life. It was just, um, yeah, it just feels like, yeah, they can kind of recon the fact of him being buddy with Thor. That, I know that will work. Um, so it's definitely, it just sets it up. It's the fact that he died means that he's the one character really from that died in Infinity War that they've kind of scooted around, you know, like Heimannik, you know, what's his, what's his name? Um, Heimdall? Yeah. Heimdall, you know, we, 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 he's, there's not really any really question of him, of what happened with him. And so Loki set it up. The other big issue really was vision was they went back and put the stone back. So Captain America should have gone back and put the stone back in 2012 when they stole the, um, the, the scepter, the scepter. Um, the question is now is what's happening with vision because he wasn't, we didn't see him in the movie. They didn't, he, you know, he didn't, he doesn't just snap back because he was killed um, by Thanos by him taking out the stone. So there's now there was other news come out that um, Elizabeth Olsen said that the show, the show is set in the fifties and it's a lot of fun and it's going to be about six hours long and they start filming it this fall leading up to this whole other like speculation of, is it a, an alternative reality? Is it something that's in our mind? Is it virtual reality? Did Suri uh, manage to download enough of vision to be able to put him into another body? We just don't know. No, we have no idea. They didn't even hint at what is going on. And if, if uh, Elizabeth Olsen hadn't tweeted out that thing about the fifties, we don't even actually know if the show is in the fifties or if they're just kind of making a stopover in the fifties. I actually read that tweet and I was thinking more along the lines of, oh, this is going to be a time travel adventure where they're going to hit multiple eras. Mm. But I, I'm only just basing that on a single tweet. And that was my impression of it. I'm, there's no additional supporting evidence to say what it's going to be. I just said it's based on a number of comic books. So, I mean, they've, they've had, I mean, you probably know them more than I do, but it's, yeah, you know. They, just as long as they don't have kids, please don't do the kids storyline. That's an awful storyline. <laughs> Unless they do it and it's like it's all in like some alternative reality in her head because she can't handle the loss or whatever. I don't know. But it's that kind of weird thing, really, of Vision was the only one they didn't really set up. Um, whether or not they do that in another movie, I don't know. But we don't know. They could just set it up. Of them. The series could just be bring, them bringing him back. You know, that could be the way they do it. Yeah, I mean, that could be the entire series. It could, it could even be similar to what I was talking about with the Falcon earlier, where Vision doesn't even show up till the final episode. It's just a search for the for however long the series is. Now I don't think that's the the way they're going to go. They would call if they're going to call it WandaVision, that would imply that he's going to be in the majority of the series. Do you know but what? We'll, well see. We'll see. That thing is that means actually that thing of WandaVision. It's like well, if it's her portraying this alternative reality with her witchcraft and stuff, it's like it's Wanda. It's through her vision. It's through her 
um, how well, that's that's the thing. It, it works on multiple levels, and it can mean all of those things all at once. Yeah. So it's definitely going to add that all up. It's just, I you know, you kind of sat there and sort of fought with like how they set it up. And Vision was that kind of weird thing of like they didn't really do. They, he was not mentioned. He wasn't done anything in it. Loki. They didn't mention Loki at all after the movie. You know, he he escaped, and then Captain America goes back in time with all the time stones and the hammer to put things back to where they were. But it's like, well, yeah, it's like you're trying to put the time back together, but there was a major gapping problem that you caused by doing that. And they didn't even address it, but obviously Loki can do that a lot easier. But yeah, I the rest of the stones, you know, yeah, then you put the you know you put them back a little bit easier. But that one thing with Loki set off a whole different aspect going forward. Um but just speaking of that whole the way of doing time travel and reinvest going back to the Avengers stuff, I knew they were going to take to try and travel. I just wasn't expecting them to do it that way. No, I actually really enjoyed the way they did it. Now, there, as you mentioned, there are, are a lot of troublesome aspects to it, and they kind of just hand wave it away as going, we can mess around with the past however we want. It'll just kind of, uh, yeah, it'll just splinter and, and do things. But I just love, th this is what I really enjoyed about the movie was that we got to see all of these. Uh, historical moments uh, again through the eyes of the veteran characters, yeah. and and this is where I, I would say going back to the beginning of the episode, where as you know, a fanboy of the MCU, these scenes were great, but I could see how uh, people who were only just there, kind of enjoying the series, not fully invested, but you know, still enjoying it, still having a lot of fun, but not you know particularly concerned that part may have dragged quite a bit because there's a lot of very important character moments that have nothing to do with the plot of Endgame. Tony talking to his dad, uh, Cap seeing uh, Agent Carter, uh, Thor getting to talk to his mom on, one last time. These are scenes that really don't have any um, story weight, but are very impactful when taken in the long-term context of the series. Well, to me, it was very much more about their, their character development because obviously you look at it now of like Captain America, he sees her again as a as younger and wants to be with her. And then he sets it up, sets up why he does what he did. Right. Tony Stark about accepting, you know, because there's that whole thing really of like him with, this, with his daughter of just like not wanting to change things. He doesn't want to wipe out his daughter from history. You know, that kind of, you know, it makes sense. And then four, really about the fact of him recovering the fact that he needs oh, yeah. to be a hero again. And the fact that he, inst the fact he makes peace with his mum, then he can get the hammer back. You know? Yeah, sorry, I, I phrased it badly. It's not that they don't have any plot significance. Yeah. It's that they go on way too long for what they contribute to the plot. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, you can get the point across of, Tony has a moment with his dad and he re reaffirms that he will do anything for his daughter. Captain America sees Agent Carter and wants to and realizes that he wants to to come back and stay with her when he returns to Stones. Thor learns what it is to be the leader again, uh, you know, after meeting with his mom and having that closure. Mm. But these scenes are much more than that. And there's a lot more going on to them, which are, are more continuity heavy and they could have been much shorter and still had the same impact. So that's kind of what I meant. Yeah. It's, it's, I think I still think the four one was the most important one because obviously it gets him back on track. Right, I, of course. I also like the fact that they use his mum rather than Natalie Portman. Is she, is I really hard to tell if did they actually did she do shoot any new scenes or did they just reshoot or did they just edit in rocket raccoon in around her? Because he did, he didn't really approach her at all. I, it was it was more important that he spoke to his mum than his go ex girlfriend. I strongly suspect that they used a body double for any scenes that they needed to shoot, and then they were using B roll or leftover footage from Thor: Dark World for the remaining shots. I can't confirm that. I don't know. They do put her in the credits. Yeah. Uh, but given how you know, they were very careful to hide her face when she's talking to the, the handmaiden outside the door. And even when Rocket is stalking her, uh, that makes it sound really bad. But when Rocket's in that room with her, uh, you don't really see Natalie. You know it's her, but you don't really see her. So I strongly suspect it was a body double, which yeah, yeah. I mean, fine, I, you know, I, with, with the cast size. Yeah, so. it, it was mad. And then you just get like Robert Redford turns up for a couple of scenes and you get... um. Um, you know, you get Michelle Pfeiffer, and that's what I, 
yeah, and it's like you had Michio Fiverr turn up for, a little, for like one bit, and then Michael Douglas is there, and it's like, you know, like, this is like one the heck of a cast in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, and I loved that they they brought back some of these characters who we thought we'd never see again. Tilda Swinton is the ancient one. Robert Redford is the director. Uh, heck, uh, I don't know the actor's oh, name, but Rumlo Crossbones yeah. uh, back. Rene Rousseau, of course, as uh, Friga. It was great that they had these moments where, like, you got to to see characters who were gone and. The elevator, the, the elevator scene of like I was just about to say the elevator <laughs> scene with him leaning in and doing the hail hydra and the reaction of everyone in the elevator. I was just like, that was fantastic. I love that scene. Um, yeah. But yeah, and, and that's why I love the movie so much is is because it very much builds on that history. These scenes would not have worked the way they had if we hadn't already seen them in Avengers 2012 and Civil War and thor dark world and all that stuff so yeah it was it was i think again it's just this weird way of like how they got there but i'm really glad as well off i you know i saw the the teaser trailer years but i knew so little going into this movie and why i wanted to go so early to see it was that i knew nothing i hadn't watched really any of the trailers they've been they very much held holding stuff out. there was a lot of fake outs in those trailers the whole thing with captain marvel's pager that never got in they said well yeah we filmed stuff that to throw you all off scent they didn't even use it well i mean it, it was yeah i guess they just decided that the uh that showing it in the after credit sequence in yeah. in captain marvel was enough it's like you saw it in Captain Marvel. You didn't need to see it, but of course, when we saw um, Ant Man, they actually uh, the actual movie Ant Man. They had a scene from Civil War in it, which was lifted straight from Civil War. But I actually appreciated that they didn't need to do the pager. We already knew the pager happened from yeah. Captain Marvel and all that. So it was just that scene of just like having her just glowing there, just saving Tony Stark. And I love the fact as well that Tony Stark he looked like he hadn't eaten for yeah. They did a yeah, that, they did a great job with that. Yeah. And I like the fact that you know how he's weakened and he's you know he's really ill because he's just not eaten. And the fact of I thought that was great. And the fact of Sarah just flying in, just it was like it was like Superman. It was really like, and then she just comes in at the end and just destroys the entire shit and just Thanos headbutts her and just On, does, oh the the headbutt where, where the headbutt was great. Actually, I have to, I have to say uh, there's so many favorite scenes in this. I loved seeing her leading what was functionally a force, the all women's Avenger group. Um, yeah. just with them, which is so great because we can remember back in Avengers, uh, 2012, mm. there was that, like, where are the women? Yeah. Uh, you've got black widow and then you've got a couple of supporting cast members and that is it. Kobe smolders. Um, and that is it. And now you, you come into end game and yes, yeah, sure. They're still massively outnumbered by the guys, but you've got enough to, to fill up like two squads of nothing but women to be the escort for Captain Marvel with the gauntlet. And it was just a great moment. I, I was a little bit going, oh, that's a little bit corny. It was, it was, I, part of me was like, going, oh, I love that. And the part of me goes, it was a bit corny, but I loved it. I, again, it's like you say, you know, the, that thing, will they do an A-Force movie with all the, with the, the female characters? It was that strong thing of like going, you're looking at going, you know, they couldn't have made, you know, kept, you know, yes, it was about finishing off some of the art, but the way they made it look, you know, even just the fact of like her cutting her hair and looking so different uh, and looking more like the comic book version. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I won't comment on the haircut because <laughs> I, I preferred the long haired look for, for Captain Marvel. But I mean, yeah, doesn't matter. It, yeah. It's the character. She can do whatever she wants. She's the most powerful being in the universe now that Thanos is gone. Uh, yeah, she can do whatever she wants. This is that thing of something like when they, all the rockets went up and they start shooting, going, well, what's going on? And then she just flies in and just destroys the ship. And you're going, whoa, okay. So she, but then they had that thing of Thanos couldn't beat Thanos. She got kicked to the curb. And because it was that thing of, yeah, she was so completely overpowered, but they needed Captain America to have that final, you know, the fact of then he gets the hammer and all the rest of it. And you're like, you know, just seeing four just like swinging the act, you know, and there's having us that big fight of it, it was just them two versus Thanos. I, it was a great, and I like, you know, obviously Tony had that last scene, but I'm glad they didn't do too much with Iron Man fighting him because that wouldn't have made any sense. Yeah, Iron Man, for as technologically uh, skilled as he was, he he was probably the weakest link of that fight, and they knew it. And especially, 
if it had just been Captain America without Mjolnir, uh, then he would have been the weakest link. Yeah. But him having the hammer with Thor having the axe, it was just like, oh, Thanos, you're in trouble now. And that that entire sequence was just a uh, perfect ending to end game. Uh, I know it's not the actual ending. There was still like 20 minutes left, but that was the, the that was the culmination of 11 years of story right there. It was that weird thing as well. Like we saw a movie where Thanos died twice. <laughs> That's true. It is true. So two people got to have the satisfaction of killing Thanos. Yeah. Um, but it was that kind of um thing. I also that thing of when Thor was just, you know, a, you know, the big Lebowski and then <laughs> that was good. And it was so good. I mean, I did come back to my wife and and I did joke about the fact of like, well, you know how you wanted, you know, me to have a body like four where you got it there. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a beard and some hair and I'm set. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to do the beard. I'm not so sure about the hair, huh? Yeah, I think that one's gone. But yeah, it was just I love that. And I love like and obviously like them setting up themselves in um like Norway and just even having the Pegasus. I mean, you're watching this scene and going, This looks like something out of ready at uh, Ready Player One at this point of just like, and then you know, all the scenes open up and everyone comes running in, you know, and there's a little comment between Doctor Strange going, "Did you bring it? Do you, is this not enough, people?" Yeah, that was... <laughs> just seeing everybody get a proper moment in the sun, not just in the introduction, but in the fight. You know, everyone got at least a little bit of screen time in the fight. Yeah. Uh, it just felt epic on a level that very few films ever reach. Uh, yeah, but also that fight scene, the big fights, it wasn't bloated. I didn't think that fight scene was that bloated. It wasn't like you said, like Return of the King, where it went to go on forever. That fight, the big epic fight, didn't it didn't feel to me very long at all. It felt like literally minutes. Yeah, and if we go back to the uh, Infinity War review that we did last year when that came out on Disney Kingdom, uh, you'll probably remember that one of my biggest complaints with Infinity War was that the final fight really didn't feel all that interesting uh you know it, it was very localized and it, it was it felt very small scale for what should have been a huge fight this was the fight that i was looking for and this fight it felt epic on such a massive level i think as well as like a big scene of like when all the portals opened and all the heroes came out you knew at that point that it was okay the heroes are literally going to wipe the villains out at this point you knew that that that, that was it you knew that it was over. Thanos knew that it was over at that point because everybody was together. You know, even the Thanos, the fact of going, right, just destroy everybody. You know, it was that thing of you felt that momentum picking up that suddenly business had picked up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yes, there was still the Infinity Gauntlet and there was still that portion of the fight. And Thanos himself is, of course, uh, still a massive threat. But yeah, when when all the heroes show up and they've got their their introduction and the crowd is cheering because all their favorites are appearing and and you get a couple of heartfelt reunions like Iron Man and Spidey, but yeah, at that point you're like, we got some catharsis coming our way right yeah. now. It was and also you know they brought back the f black the 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 first or the Black Order, but they got white. I mean they got literally just they weren't a threat in this. They were just thrown to the side. They weren't even. I mean. In terms of wrestling, they just got thrown straight over the top rope and out of the battle royal within like three seconds of it walking in. They just they weren't even considered a threat. They showed up and you're like, Oh, I remember those guys from Infinity War. And then the next time you see them, they're turning to dust. And that, yeah. that was their con except for uh except for Maw, uh yeah. you know, the telekinetic one. Yeah. Uh except for him. He showed up a couple times, but yeah, they're like you guys are cannon fodder. You, you are here to get punched by heroes so that the heroes can have a, a heroic moment in this fight. It's a shame because I think it would have been like an interesting villain to go forward in other, um, in other movies because I think they, Marvel does have a tendency to like to kill villains and they are, it's that thing of, yeah, it's like we could, we could do with them hanging around. Thanos needed to go, but um, the, the Black First Order or the Black Order would have been a much better I would like to see a little bit more of them, but yeah, it's just, it was amazing really of just like seeing how this all come together. And like I say it to have to have 20 odd movies build up to this. That's what the things of, yeah. And you could say, well, you know, it was you know, like say fan was it's like, well, why not? Why can't we have this stuff? Why does every, you know, just everything can lead up to a movie and things can build up. You know, it's like, they're telling an entirely different story mode. And 
nobody's even touching this, you know. And I don't think anybody, I don't know if we'll ever, like you say, can they ever get back to this point? Will this be the peak of Marvel? Well, in 10 years' time, we don't know. I mean, they, you know, if we start doing, they start doing Secret Wars or something. Um, I don't know. I just don't. It, there was that thing of that thing with Thanos killing everybody at the end of the series. At the end of that. I mean, even just that. This first opening scene with um, um, Hawkeye really just like set the tone of. I'd like to see a hint of, but I suppose they didn't really want to just show kids just fading away that might have not quite been PG 13. Well, yeah, okay. So that might not have been PG 13, but I was surprised by how many uh, S words they got in and still kept the PG 13. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not offended by it. I was just horribly surprised. It's like, wow, they, they're saying that a lot in this movie. I, you know what? I didn't even notice. Didn't even notice. It was, uh, but it, it did work out quite well. I just liked how they did it. And yeah. I, and I think as well of because they focused on just a few core, I mean, you say a few, I mean, they still had like 10, a team of the, at least 10 plus superheroes. It felt tight. And I think that was a good thing because why we had Spider-Man and all the rest of it come in for the big final battle, they knew that that movie was bloated with too many characters. And so by bringing it down to just a few, it did help. Yeah, and it wasn't just any random selection of characters, too. It was characters that audiences had re resonated with in the past. The only possible exception being Nebula, because she didn't really play much of a part in either Guardians 1 or 2. Uh, maybe a bit in Guardians 2. Uh, and she was there mostly to provide that um, that back door for Thanos to, to come in into the, the present and mm. have the big battle again. Uh, and she was important to the original Infinity War storyline. She did get the gauntlet after Thanos did. Uh, obviously, they didn't do that. And while I probably would have liked to have seen that, I'm kind of glad they didn't. It would have overcomplicated stuff. But yeah, with I mean, the exception of her, you yeah. know, you're looking you're looking at the original core six Avengers: Rocket, who is a fan favorite, um, Ant Man, who is a fan favorite, and War Machine, mm -hmm. uh, who has been around since the beginning as well. Uh, obviously, he had an actor change. He wasn't War Machine in Iron Man 1, but he has been there since the beginning, so it was very worth having him there. Yeah. It was just, I think that just worked very well. And the only other issue really going forward, it really is what they're going to do. Black Widow kind of going. It's like, I mean, I know they're planning a movie, but I don't know if that would be like the send-off to her character as a prequel kind of thing, or, I mean, I can't see how they're going to bring her back um, because she might feel like she's done as, you know, just doing this one movie. I don't know. I could see, you know, there's no precedent for it, but I could see them saying, you know, the stone gets destroyed because that that's still part of continuity. Thanos destroys the stones near the beginning of the movie. Uh, with that particular stone destroyed, her and Gamora could potentially make a return because there's nothing binding them anymore. But I don't know what the mechanics for that would be. Yeah, because it's... Uh, yeah. Again, their time zone is like what's happened's happened, doesn't it? So it doesn't go and then right. and the time zone back. Because obviously, that's it's, we all, there's that whole other question. Of, well, what did Captain America do when he went back and handed the red the red stone back to Red Skull? You know, <laughs> that was a whole that's a whole other issue for continuity. Yeah, and you know now, Agent Sitwell and Rumlow think that he is a Hydra agent. So why are they fighting him in Civil War? Yeah, it. It's the whole Austin Powers second movie, don't think about it too hard or your eyes will go cross kind of they deal. Did, they did specifically say the past is the past and that doesn't right. change. I think that was very much, they, they made the point of saying that, you know, when they did the whole thing with the Ancient One and Hope, of saying like the time, what's happened, the characters that know it, know it. And everyone knows what's happened in the past. It's just a splint off of an alternative timeline. So I think they've kind of explained the fact that time still, the way we've seen the movies still happen. Nothing that doesn't change anything. It was just, I don't know. It's it's, it, it, it's going to oh. be a don't think too hard on it kind of thing. Everything still happens the way you do it. At the very worst, uh, there's a little bump. Like, okay, the Tesseract doesn't immediately end up in the control of or Return to S.H.I.E.L.D., and the Strucker uh, doesn't get the staff 
immediately after the battle. He gets it like a couple days later. And that's that's the full extent of how much the timeline is disrupted by this. But like you said, they, they went out of their way to say, no, 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 past is the past. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. even though it could potentially change, no, things happen the way you remember them happening. And also the fact that they made fun of the fact of Hot Tub Time Machine and Terminator. That was pretty good. And Back to the Future, like, time doesn't work like that. And I think that was quite a good way of them kind of... And then them explaining that this timeline, you know, they're doing it. They did a graph to show how time works. Right. <laughs> they, now, the, the, yeah. the bigger issue now, of course, is they still have a time machine. Obviously, Cap used it at the end of the movie to, to go back and return the stones. And even though he didn't return with the time machine, it's still exists yeah so now in one of the first things they're going to have to do when they start phase four is be like nope time machine was destroyed and for magical MacGuffin reasons we can't recreate it because now your solution is just well i'm just going to go back in time before this happened and and that solves like 90 percent of the problem sure it still happens and you've got the loop thing going on but like I don't know. Uh, we killed off War Machine. Oh, hey, no, I just brought him back. It's a couple minutes from before he died, but here you go. He's he's fine. Definitely, it's definitely the one issue with time travel, but yeah, it definitely sets up um, very different future. And they're gonna, you know, it's gonna be interesting. I can't wait to see what they announce at this summer to find out what's happening with the stage next stages because they're gonna turn around and be like, these movies are coming, and it was help set up an idea of what's going forward, and because. Essentially, after we don't know, there's they've got all the. I think this is the good thing: is the Disney Plus shows being made by Marvel Studios is going to drastically change how things go forward. Whereas, you no, know, I'd have loved to just seen like Cloak and Dagger just turn up in that big fight scene, but they weren't. And that was this is where this interconnection problem will disappear with Marvel shows going forward. Is that will that won't happen the same way? Right, and I'm glad it would have been nice to see Daredevil or Luke Cage or the Cloak and Dagger or the Runaways show up. I will say it was very nice that they did include uh, the original Jarvis from the Agent Carter in a very brief cameo as uh, Howard Stark's driver. And they could have done that with other characters like Sky or I guess she goes by Daisy uh, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But I did at least want to throw that one out. That was... So far as I know, the only time that the television show, a television show, has influenced the movies in any way. And it was a, absolutely minuscule, but it was a nice touch. Yeah. It's just like I said, there was so much stuff going on in that movie. And it, I think now that Marvel Studios are making the Marvel TV series going forward, you know, that is going to have an impact. I think we're going to see a much closer thing because they're going to be the ones writing it and going forward. And yeah, like you say, we had Endgame, and now suddenly we've got two spin-off series, maybe three spin-off series from Endgame coming in the next 18 months to two years from the events of this movie. And um, we know we had the Avengers movie, which created the um, you know, we we saw that mentioned in like Daredevil, and we saw it mentioned in, you know, the the event in New York got mentioned in a number of different series, but this is a much more tighter to what those characters roll over not just a little cameo from Nick Fury in the first minute of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and we never see him ever again. Actually, it was the last minute of the first season, but still, yeah. Uh, and we've seen a couple other characters in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know Sif popped over and and uh, so on, but yeah, I, I'm definitely hoping that with the move to Disney Plus and with Disney controlling all aspects of the television, we might see a couple of those uh, properties bleed into the movies a little now obviously we don't want it to be a situation where uh luke cage shows up in avengers 5 or whatever they end up calling it and and they just expect you to have seen luke cage season one and two and his cameos in the defenders and all that but if they can do something like you've got shield up and running again um, and you're in a shield base and director fury or or maria hill is doing something and one of the people who brings up a report is Fitz Simmons or or uh, Daisy from Agents of Shield. That's all you have to do. Uh, and and it if you recognize the character, then it's a great moment. And if you don't recognize the character, you don't even realize you missed something. 
But there we go. So that was kind of like our spoiler kind of Disney Plus discussion about Avengers Endgame. Let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of the movie and of these upcoming TV, sh TV shows. Go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. And we'll be back next week with just a single episode. But like we said, we, we, we wanted to talk about Endgame. We were so much to talk about. We've been waiting for it for a long time. But let us know your thoughts. James, where can they find you? I'm a heroiclegacy.com. And on that, guys, Avengers Assemble. <laughs>